Hello everyone, Dolphin Oracle here tonight, and tonight I'm taking a look at migrating from Windows XP, which is end of life on Tuesday, to uh, to something uh, a little bit better for you. Um, here on my Annex desktop, this Annex might be the way to go for you, but I'm going to show off the new MX14 with this. So I've got a virtual machine running here, Windows XP, and the first thing you need to do is you need to download the MX14 image and that is found at mepiscommunity.org slash MX come down here select the version you need to download you select here and we have two versions we've got the PAE version so if you know your computer can support more than three and a half gigabytes of RAM this is probably the version you want it's the one if you don't know this is the one to try first if you have a computer that you know cannot support more than three and a half gigabytes of RAM or more than four gigabytes of RAM and sometimes it's said then you want the non-PAE version this is only for certain systems some Celerons have this problem older Celerons you can uh, uh, you, you, if, if the PAE version doesn't work for you of MX14 you can switch to this one it almost certainly will work so you download the one you want now the next step is getting the ISO. This is the file you're going to get, the ISO. It's going to take a while to download. It's about 700 megabytes. And you need to be able to get this onto bootable media for your computer. Now what, your comp what you should use depends on your computer. If you have a CD drive, you can burn that ISO image to your to a CD. And you can use that uh, with a utility called Image Burn is, is, is a good one and you can download that. Uh, Image Burn is, a, is an interesting utility. It's free but they use a lot of uh, tricky advertising to pay for it. So you want to be careful installing it. I went to download.com because you can click on this direct link right here and that will download the setup installer. When you're installing it you want to be careful um, to always click the options that say custom because it's going to try to install some cruft along with it toolbars and things for your web browser you just don't need just get rid of them all you want is image burn and when you use image burn what you will do is you will click on write image file to a disk and you will select the MX14 ISO Uh, now, unfortunately, I am using a virtual box, so my my virtual box doesn't have a CD drive attached, so it won't work. But if it did, it would show up here, and you get a nice big friendly button to burn it to the ISO. <coughs> Excuse me, and away you go. It, it's really easy to do, and you'll get a CD that you can then take and reboot your computer on the CD. Uh, one other option you have is to use you uh, to utility like UNet boot which is downloadable from SourceForge unetbootin.sourceforge.net since you're on Windows just download the version for Windows there's only one version and it runs on every uh, flavor of Windows and what it's going to do is let you write the ISO and make a bootable USB key now if your machine can boot USB most computers of XP vintage should be able to do this not all but most um, this is really a way to go. It's, it's faster than the CD. So you'll run the utility. You'll download the utility from SourceForge and you'll run the utility. There's nothing to install. It's just standalone utility. And what you'll want to do is you'll want to click on disk image and this little button over here and take it to the MX14 ISO. Now here you're going to want to select your USB drive. I do not have one installed right now but um, if I had a USB key installed uh, it will show up here. You click OK. It writes the ISO and everything to the bootable media and then you restart your computer with the USB from the USB. Very very simple. Now sometimes if you have a great big USB key like 8, bit, eight gigabytes and up say. I haven't had this problem with 4's but 8 gigabyte SanDisk cruisers. Sometimes it doesn't show up in this. The drive shows up as a hard disk instead of a removable drive and uh, unit boot and won't recognize it here. Uh, there is another utility you can download called Universal USB Installer. Uh, 
which is available at pendrivelinux.com. I'll have these links in the show notes. Ignore this button. That's not the button. That's an ad. US, universal USB installer. Here, here it is. Download here. You uh, will let you do the same thing, but it will let you override uh, its detection of of removable media by checking this now showing all drives. And if you're very careful, you can select your proper drive, format it, go to town, Bob's your uncle, you're done. Very easy to do to make a bootable USB. So, I am going to reboot my system from a the ISO because I can do that in VirtualBox, but it's going to be exactly the same as if rebooting from um, as if rebooting from a uh, CD. And here we are. It's booted now back into the MX14 disk. This is the screen you're going to get when you when you uh, reboot into the system and you can run it live. And I recommend using the time zones. You can use F2 to set a time zone. Or rather it's F3, excuse me. F2 sets a language. F3 sets a time zone. F4 gives you some interesting options uh, if you, depending on your hardware. You can actually, if you have a lot of RAM, uh, say 4 gigs and up, you can actually boot the entire system into RAM and it's quite speedy. It takes slightly longer to boot up, much faster to run. The F5 option gives you some options to reboot in case your video drivers are a little uh, cantankerous. If, it, if you don't get a bootable uh, Windows-like desktop when you first boot, try VESA and then try SAFE for the last. So anyway, we're going to boot. Just hit the default option. You're going to see some text scrolling across the screen. Don't panic. The text can actually give you a lot of interesting information if something would error out about your particular hardware. Remember, Linux is free. It's not Windows. And there's no company behind us offering a whole bunch of support. So sometimes we need to know things to help people out in our forums. And there we are. This is what your MX14 desktop's going to be. That was the screensaver. I think I had my hand laying on a key, on a touch key. So this is the MX14 desktop. So that's making bootable media from the MX14 ISO file using tools available to you from your Windows XP machine. For tips, tricks, how-tos, and documentation, head over to mepuscommunity.org slash mx or put up a post at forum.mepuscommunity.org. This is Dolphin Oracle signing off. Have a great night.